the lecture given by His Holiness Bhaktivika Swami, recorded on 13th March 1996 in Hyderabad, India. Sri Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Reading this purport, one may falsely presume that the impersonalist is more advanced than the devotee, because here there is discussion of the universal form which Vaman Dave was exhibiting, and then the form of the little boy who everyone came to worship. Prabhupada mentions that according to the capacity of the devotee, the Lord assumes various forms so that the devotee can handle him. So the impersonist will say that worship of the deity in the temple is all right for those who are less advanced. That's good for the devotees. Those who don't realize that the all-pervasive nature of God those who are more advanced, they can handle him in his universal, all-pervaded, all-expansive form. Whereas those who are less advanced, they have to worship a deity. However, here we see that Prabhupada in the purport, he uses the word original three times, four times. Bhamande first expanded himself to the universal form, and then reduced himself to the original Vaman rule. Thus he exacted exactly like, acted exactly like Lord Krishna, who at the request of Arjuna, first showed his universal form and later resumed his original form as Krishna. The Lord can assume any form he likes, but his original form is that of Krishna. Then again, when Lord Vaman Dev resumed his original form. So the original form is apparently smaller than the universal form. Original form is this two-handed form, the form which is the origin of all forms, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, Mata Sarvam Prabhatate, Dipati Reva Hidashantara Mabhupeta, Dipayate Vivrita Hetu Samanan Dharma, Yas Tadri Geva Hijavishnu Tiyavipati, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamahamajam. There is ample evidence in the Bhagavad Gita, I've just cited Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavad uh, then uh, Brahma Samhita, that the original form is Krishna, two-handed, holding a flute. The original form of Krishna is more exciting than looking at your nails, if we had any taste. But as we're not even listening, even slightly, we don't even hear. Better to listen. We're discussing Krishna. This is the, this is the topic which we have been waiting for millions of lifetimes to get the chance to hear about Krishna, to discuss Krishna. Who is Krishna? His different incarnations. Ramande, Drishinghade, discussed in the previous canto. This is the topic which by hearing you'll become liberated from all miseries will become ecstatic in love of Krishna. This is wanted that we hear the topics of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tat Trinvan. We should hear this. Topics of Krishna. Not simply formality. That now we have to sit in class. So let me sit and watch the clock and hope it will be finished as soon as possible. But we should hear about Krishna. This important subject. We have to preach. Our temple is meant for preaching. What is the difference between this temple and any other temple? There are so many temples. In Hyderabad we'll find a famous temple, Bela temple, up on the hill. So what is the difference that this temple is meant for preaching? That means we have to know what is the actual situation. If you go to the Bela temple, you'll never find out that Krishna is the original form, rather the opposite. Or you'll go to this Hanuman temple where this Marwari started as a business. You'll never find out what is the philosophy of the absolute truth. What is that knowledge by which we can be liberated from all miseries, the knowledge of Krishna. What is the original form of Krishna? To understand these points, mostly people just go to the temple, they're not interested in anything. Simply let me go and wave some incense, offer something, and if something is there, all well and good, then I can get some benefit. 
And I should believe, because then I'll get benefit. But this is far more advanced platform. Prabhupada came, that was on the cover of the BTG, January, February edition. He came with the message of the spiritual world. There are so many religious teachers, they're simply, well, not religious teachers, there's religious leaders, especially in Kali Yoga, simply coming and making some kind of show, giving some kind of talk, but no knowledge of the spiritual world, no knowledge of Krishna. So Prabhupada, he would come every day. He used to sit here so many times. He sat here in this temple and spoke, gave knowledge of Krishna. And he gave us this to continue, that every day we should come and discuss what is the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, knowledge of the spiritual world. So this important point we are discussing. Which important point are we discussing? Does anyone know? What point did I take up to start the class before I got diverted by the massive lack of interest being demonstrated in front of me? The original form of the Supreme Lord is smaller than the universal form. God is great, God is all-pervasive, God is everywhere. There is the Vishvarup, the, the form which is the covering the whole universe. But the original form is apparently limited. It's small. Now, apparently limited means, form, if you see, means it's in one particular place. So how then, if you say that this is the form of God, how can you say that he is all pervasive, because you can see he's here, for instance, in this temple. But if you go out onto the street, you'll see the Rindavan Hotel and Polaredi Sweet Shop and traffic moving here and there. But you won't see the deity of Krishna. So you can say Krishna is here, but he's not there. So then how is he all pervading? Therefore, we have to understand, to understand this very important point, this very fine points of spiritual understanding. We have to see God not at the end of our nails again, but we have to see God through the eye of Scripture, Shastra Chakshu. We have to take knowledge from Scripture. So scripture describes, how is God all-pervasive? Andanta rasta paramanu chayanta rastam. God is within every atom. Goloka eva neva satya kilat mabhuto. He is situated in Golok. In his original form, he's situated in every living being's heart. He's situated in every atom. So he is simultaneously in one place and all pervasive. That very form of Krishna we see is in one particular place, but he's also everywhere at the same time. How is it possible? That is the meaning of God. That what is not possible for you and me is possible for him. If it were not, if we say that's not possible, that means that we have no faith in God. We don't know what the meaning of God is. God means who can do everything. Who is simultaneously all-pervasive and situated in one place. We may say, how is it possible? Because it's not possible for me. But because it's not possible for me, does not mean that it's not possible for God. That is one of the differences between Jivatma and Paramatma. Between Jiva and Bhagavan. The impersonists, they like to consider themselves as Bhagawan, Very crippled philosophy. I cannot imagine, can anyone think of making a greater mistake, a, a greater miscalculation than to think that I am God. If you, you may make some miscalculation that uh, you may think, just like we see everyone is very proud. I'm a very great person. I'm a very important person. Everyone makes this miscalculation just like we have the chief minister, I just saw his name for the first time as we were driving over the Tangban, some, uh, let me see if I can remember, Chandra Babu, Chandra Babu Naidu. So, I didn't know his name. It doesn't mean he's not great, because I didn't know about him. But anyway, there are so many chief ministers, especially in Andhra Pradesh. They're changing, <coughs> flip, 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 one after another. The old man died, and now there's another one in his place. And there'll be an election, and he'll be gone, and someone else will come. Like this. So he's thinking, I'm very important. He has a little ground to be thinking himself important because he's chief minister of a state in India. So some, something, just like in an office, who's in charge of the office, he thinks, I'm very important. He has five or six peons working under him and he can shout and scream at them and uh, he feels himself very important. 
course, sometimes they may pull, have a strike, and then they'll get out of him. But anyway, everyone is thinking, I'm very important. So, this is a miscalculation, because we're not important. We're very insignificant. But, bigger miscalculation to think, I am God. If you think, I'm very important because I'm in charge of five peons, that is a miscalculation. If you think, I'm very important because I'm the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, that is also a miscalculation, because it's a temporary position. It's not a very big position anyway. Just like this, that story is there, the Shah of Iran. He came to Washington. John F. Kennedy was the president, not temple president. He was the president of the United States of America. So John F. Kennedy deliberately insulted him. When he was sitting in front of him, JFK put his feet up on the chair and pointed his feet at him. Just to show, you may be the Shah of Iran, but I am the president of America. He was puffed up. He got shot down. So, the chief minister of AP is not very important. President of America is also not very important, although we think he is. These are all miscalculations because they're all temporary positions. And anyway, what is it to be the president of some tiny speck in the universe for a short time? So, if you think you're important by any material calculation, that is a miscalculation. But to think, I am God, what a massive miscalculation. Just like if you think one drop of water is the same as the ocean in quantity. That is called a massive mistake, massive illusion. So if someone thinks, I am God, I am moving the universe, I am all pervasive, and you find people are thinking like this. We found some idiot in the village who was semi-educated the other day, who was thinking, I am God. By, in, by the influence of Mayavad philosophy. Massive mistake to think that I am God. So this is the effect of impersonal philosophy that actually it makes people insane. People are already insane. Material life means that everyone is insane. Nunang pramata kurutevi karma. That is the test. Shastra is not simply some kind of mumbo jumbo or formula, formulas. But everything is said in Shastra is to the point. Just see. Nunang pramatak kurute vikarma. Why are people performing all sinful activities? Because they are mad. They are mad. They don't realize that sinful activities will entangle them in more and more suffering. Therefore, they are insane. Everyone in this material world is insane. Another proof they are insane. They are identifying with this body which they are not. So everyone is already insane in this material world. And if they take Advaitavad, by which they think, I am God, then they become super insane. It means not, not simply uh, outpatient, but they, in the Pagal, in the, in the insane asylum, there are different categories. Some people, they're outpatients. They come once a week, they get some drugs, they go away. Others, they're in open ward. And others, they're locked up in chains. So those who are thinking, I am God, they, are in, they should be in the security department. They're really, really nuts. Really, seriously insane. But, in this material, now in the present age, this Advaita Vad, by which people think, I am God, this is very widely spread. <coughs> and we can see the proof that Advaita Vad confuses people so much and makes them so much insane that they cannot even understand very simple points, very simple things. Just like I was saying to this man, I was pointing at the fan and saying, to show there is difference, everything is not all the same, that the fan is different from an umbrella. But he couldn't understand. Very simple point. This means, if someone thinks a fan is the same as an umbrella, he's insane. Because it's clearly, it's axiomatically different. It's not a matter of philosophy. It's just different, that's all. Even a child can understand this is different. Actually, a child in a very, in the very beginning of life, a child has so little power of discrimination that he'll put anything in his mouth. He can't discriminate. He sees every, everything is all the same. He'll, he'll see something bleach. He'll think, let me drink, and he'll die. He has no discrimination. He's not trained. He, he's just like an animal, even less than an animal. His intelligence is not in proper order. So, 
one who cannot see the difference between one thing and another, he's like a madman or a child, like a baby, no intelligence. You cannot see there's some crazy thing they'll say, yes, it's when you come to a when you come to a higher spiritual realization, you'll realize that a fan is the same as an umbrella. Does that mean that when you're spiritually advanced, that in the hot season to shade yourself from the sun, you'll carry one fan? It won't give you shade. And it won't spin either and pull. Or in the rainy season, you'll take one fan from the ceiling and carry it above your head. Then you'll definitely get put in the madhouse. Because you're definitely mad. So this Mayavad philosophy, this confuses people so much that they talk absolutely nonsense. Absolutely madness. Just to say, I am God. What madness? Prabhupada's response to, when Prabhupada was asked, what should we say if people say, I am God? What argument should we say? And Prabhupada said, don't give them any argument. Just kick them in the face, that's all. What are you going to argue with such a foolish person? There's a, the man is insane and seriously offensive because this offensive mentality, that is there. Everyone has come to this world with an offensive mentality towards Krishna. Krishna bahimok hoya bhogavan chakore. Everyone wants to enjoy sense gratification because they're inimical to Krishna. So everyone's already envious of Krishna. But this Mayavad philosophy, this compounds and makes people steady, fixed up in envy of Krishna. Therefore, even if someone is somewhat pious, apparently pious, that they're infected by this Mayavad philosophy, that even if you, by argument they cannot understand because their envy of Krishna has become deeply fixed. By which they cannot see, they cannot see the obvious thing that I you are not God, you are not the supreme controller, you are not the supreme. They cannot understand a very simple point. Therefore, how dangerous is this Mayavad philosophy? Mayavad Vashya Shunle Hoy Sarvanash Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warned anyone who listens to this philosophy Mayavad he is doomed. His spiritual life is finished. Therefore, we have Srimad Bhagavatam class every day. To understand what is the real philosophy, the proper philosophy, the proper understanding. Who is God? I am not God. You are not God. Krishna is God. What is the meaning of the word God? So many people say God, as if it's a very cheap thing. Any rascal can call himself God, and he'll get some followers. I've seen here in Andhra Pradesh that... Uh, What's that Shiva temple? Sri Sailam. One big Mayavadi, huge fat guy was being carried on a palanquin. He's fat because he's God. He, Krishna says in the Gita, Naman Karmani, I have nothing to do. So he's a Mayavadi, he has nothing to do. So all he does, the people bring him food, he has nothing to do, he eats. He has good power of digestion. So sitting on his palanquin, being carried. Actually, you're not supposed to go in a palanquin to the temple. He was carried. Such a puffed up, I've never seen anyone look so puffed up in my life. So puffed up and carried. And why is he puffed up? Because all these village people, uneducated, are jumping around him and dancing. And he's thinking I'm God because a bunch of village people who have no intelligence whatsoever are thinking that this man is God. So such people, their future is very dark. And those who follow them, their future is very dark. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada very kindly preached the proper philosophy that we are not God. We are the servant of God. He preached this with every drop of his blood. And he wanted his followers to do that also. Our temples are meant for this. We're going out everywhere and telling people, first of all, you're not the body, you're a spirit soul, and you're not God also. You're the servant of God. Here in Andhra Pradesh, this Maya, everywhere in India it spread. But here in Andhra Pradesh, it's quite strong. Even though people have an inclination towards bhakti, this uh, is very much spoiled by Mayavadi, ras Mayavadi rascals. And people, they, it's very difficult when they become infected by this Mayavadi, it becomes very difficult for them to understand. And they think we're, when we preach against this, they think we're some kind of fanatics. I remember in Vishakhapatnam once I gave a class in the temple there. And then afterwards some young girl came up and said, well, why are you saying all these people? 
Why are you saying we're not God? And they're, why are you saying we are? They're, well, all these swamis, so many swamis come here and give lectures, and they all say that we're all God. So why are you saying something different? You just presume, because they all come, and they all say, all I hear from these rascals is that we're all God, but especially I'm God, more than you, because I've realized. What nonsense they're talking. So we have a very great task distributing these books, reaching this message. Here, India, this country is meant for people to become spiritually advanced and go back to Godhead. But their opportunity, taking birth in India, is spoiled by Mayavadis, gross materialists, spoiled by Shobha Dei, Pushwan Singh, and all these rascals. They're spoiling people. India Today magazine spoiling people, spoiling their spiritual inclinations. So we have a very great job, first to understand this philosophy, then preach it, so that people may be saved from the nescience of impersonalism. Hare Krishna, is there any question? Did you understand anything about the class? What was the class about? Hmm? Speak a little loudly, I can't hear. Between? Yeah, all right. That was how I opened the class. Then what happened after that? What did I say after that? You have to speak more loudly. My body is spoiling. Yes. This is very nice. But actually during class, you shouldn't do. You can do quietly. Otherwise it's very nice. Hare Krishna. All the girls' hair is cut. They're all widows. New fashion. <coughs> New fashion. Actually, they should be married now. They're already widows. Maybe. I see Prabhupada is very strong. <coughs> Chopping technique. His spiritual master, he quoted that he used to use chopping technique. And that sometimes his own disciples would criticize him. They would be afraid to take, they were preaching to people, but they would be afraid to take them to Guru Maharaj. Because they were afraid that he would blow them away. Those who criticized him, Prabhupada, said they fell down. His own disciples would criticize him for being too strong. Practically, we have to be very careful not to become too soft on Mayavadis. If we become too soft, then we ourselves may tend to become compromised. Very tough. Very tough. They're demons. Well, uh, that story is there, but I don't know. It's someone told that, but I don't know who touched him. There's a story told that he used to walk up to them on the street and grab them, but I don't think it's actually a true story. That came in the, the first thing that was written about him in one of the old, old BTGs, and it's entered ISKCON folklore. But I don't know if that's actually true. His speaking was sufficient to cut them to pieces. Just like Prabhupada said, kick them in the face with boots, but he didn't, he didn't actually do it. But by his speaking, he did it. In other words, Prabhupada, by his strong speech, we may think we may speak more, we should speak more mildly, but Prabhupada was already being lenient with them by not actually beating them in the face with boots and not urinating in their face, as he, as he said. 
It's sometimes in different ways. And then he said, "Do you really want? To, do you really want to know what? What?" And then uh, they they pushed him to answer. Then Prabhupada said, "Very clear." He did, he was declining. I don't want to talk about him. But when they pushed him, he said, he "Still, he could have declined, but he, he said very straightforward. He's a cheater. He's a rascal." I don't think even Burijan didn't put everything in there. He said, "Anyone who calls himself God, he's a dog." And I kick on his face with boots. I urinate in his face. What will he do? Prabhupada is saying, "Write it." It comes in the conversation book. Write it. Write it. Write it down. Yes, some. T- yeah, you may do. Prabhupada specifically told about Ram Krishna in Bengal not to directly speak against him. It's actually physically dangerous in Bengal. Jai Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. He had, all these, he had all these girls, 26 year old, not married, with a degree, and they don't know how to cook a chapati. But who wants to marry them? They're puffed up because they've got a degree. So they come to Isco. <laughs> try to shoot down some, some brahmachari. But this is strange, I mean, uh, in one sense, uh, they're so puffed up, and then because our attitude is that the woman should be submissive to us, something like that, so why would they come to such a place as Eastern that has that philosophy? Yeah. I don't know, I mean, I guess they think they're easy pushover. According to Shobha, they, the best place to get a man is at an ashram, because they're the most, the most lusty people in the ashrams. Probably read Shobha, they. <laughs> Rascal. <laughs> No, you have to see, just like that day I was speaking in the village with that guy who was talking Mayavad. He didn't even say you speak about Mayavad. I could just tell from what he said to me that he was a Mayavad. Just... No, no, they just said that Jagannath Das told that he's affiliated with Shivananda Ashram and Gayatri Pariva. So then I just said, so you, so you believe in this Advaitavad? And then I just started speaking what is wrong. But you see, the man was so dull. That he couldn't understand even no the difference way. between a fan and an, um, and an umbrella. And he was an educator. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with such people? And you find that always, that people become very stubborn. Because they're attached to this impersonal idea. Because it affords them a cover for sense gratification and at the same time <laughs> thinking they're spiritually advanced. <laughs> it's a very rascal, rascal idea. Very simple. It's pseudo spiritual. I was just thinking, like, it because in the West, you know, I used to, to uh, be really heavy on these Sai Baba guys and say that he's just, you know, anyone who says he's God, he's a dog, and you know, be really heavy and, you know, just so. But then some devotees told me to stop that because, you know, they are actually uh, <coughs> somehow, you know, if you're just nice to them, then they can take a lot of books and then... Uh, yeah, that's true. Because you can inspire them somehow. Well, they, they, they like can take a lot of books, it's true. So better to sell them books. But if they ask you, you can tell them. Yeah. <laughs> I do, generally. If they ask you, I also, I can't, I can't strain myself. Sai Baba. <laughs> Makes me want to vomit. Let other let them let them know the difference. Otherwise, they come. They find they come to our bad journeys and they think it's all the same. Let them do their own rascal nonsense somewhere else. I I would be very happy if our movement was known. If our whole movement was known, to be very much against somebody. It's like you asked me about that homosexual thing. What we should in Denmark. I I think it's a very good thing if our movement is known to be against it. 
Never mind the people think that they, they don't like us for that. We should be known. What are our principles? No, we should, it should not be thought that the Hare Krishna is think that homosexuality is okay. Oh, it is. But there's only different ways that you can speak the truth in a palatable way. I don't know. People want, how can you palatably say that? <laughs> What's palatable about homosexuality? There's nothing here that's said palatable. <laughs> It's totally unfunny. <coughs> well, you can tell them that, you know, well, you know, we, we, our philosophy is that we're not the body and sex makes sense. Identity. It's not actually our philosophy. If you say our philosophy, that means I've got my philosophy, you've got your philosophy, and my opinion is as good as yours. <laughs> That's a very bad line to use. Our philosophy is this. You should just say it. straightforward. This is lowest than the lowest enemy. Lower than the lowest enemy. Let them know what our principles are. And those who are sincere will be attracted. So, if we wake it wishy-washy and mishy-mushy, then sincere people won't come. We'll only get mishy-mushy, useless people who don't have faith in the philosophy and will compromise it. But if we say what our philosophy is clearly, those who are sincere will be attracted. Because I remember one devotee told me that, uh, that he, he, first <laughs> lecture he heard of Prabhupada, he spoke up very strongly against the United Nations, he was just teaching people. Nowadays everyone knows that more or less. <coughs> Anyone who's got any brain. But in those days, no one had even dreamed of such a concept. He said he was very attractive because he did, he did not imagine such a thing. Anyone could have such a perception. That, that comes out in that book, that Prabhupada in Germany book, I was just reading how he devoted. He said it just very, in the early days, they're very, very straightforward. And people appreciate that they must be serious. That even they're, they're chanting in the snow and. And uh, they, they just they just tell you straightforwardly that everything except Krishna consciousness is all useless. I mean, there must be there's got nothing to gain from it personally. So they must be they appreciate they, these people are genuine. They're not simply another mushy mushy wishy washy bunch of pseudo spiritualists. Those who are sincere will appreciate it. And if we get one devotee, someone who's going to dedicate his life and go back to God, God here, back to Krishna, it's better than filling up the assembly with millions of people who are not in the slightest bit serious. Why should we aspire even to such a thing? There are so many temples which attract so... It's like Sai Baba attracts so many people. Why should we aspire for that? Just a, a number, many, many numbers of people who are not in the slightest bit serious. Just, uh, they're coming for some material benefit and we, and we offer that to them. In the name of them, they're cheating people. Rather, we'll get, by all the efforts of our movement, we'll get one person to be sincere, who will dedicate their life to Krishna. So both things are there, quantity and quality. We want quantity and we want quality, but we don't want quantity at the expense of quality. First the quality should be established and then we increase the quantity. Not that we to increase the quantity and show, oh, so many people we have brought forward for initiation. So many people have come. We've got so many people. But then what do they understand? And what, is, what are they serious about? What is the use? Worse than useless. These are very dangerous things. Compromising. Very dangerous things. We should learn the art of presenting the truth palatably, also, as much as possible. But never, never compromise our principles. Otherwise, we're in a very dangerous position. Better we speak the truth straightforwardly. And anyway, however palatably we present it, one man's meat is another man's poison. So, however you present it, it will be clear, for instance, however you present it, it will be clear that Hare Krishna, we don't support homosexuality. And they won't like us. So, why not state it clearly anyway? <laughs> Those who are pro homosex rascals, they will not like us anyway. But if we present it in a kind of, well, maybe yes, maybe not, then those who are, those who are not, who are, who don't know, they may, uh, they may think we're somewhere in between. They don't know what our actual position is. Rather, actually any question like that should be an opportunity for us to give real spiritual knowledge. Yes, we are against homosexuality. Why? Because human life is meant for God realization, not for sense gratification. This body is simply a covering for the soul. <laughs> 
this human this human body is a gift from God. We are given greater intelligence. We are meant to act on a higher platform than that of sense gratification for the purpose of God realization. Therefore, any sexual activity, except that which is specifically meant for producing children in Krishna consciousness, works against the purpose of human life and is therefore sinful. Not only sexual activity, any activity which is not meant for understanding the ultimate purpose of life is sinful because it's, it's spoiling the opportunity of human life. Now, illicit sex is particularly sinful because it produces a very strong sense of identification with the body, very strongly entrapped us in material life, and homosexuality even more so. Therefore, that is called, therefore, we say, it is demonia. It is not saintly, godly people do not engage in such activities. And then one can say also, I know, I often use this Jesus quote, this, I hate to sin, not the sinner. But it's not that, you know, that we you know, condemn these people, but we condemn the activity. Yes, but you should also know someone. that if you engage in such activity, then you are condemned. <laughs> Yeah. You are condemned. You have to suffer. It's simple. You should know that. It's our duty to tell people that it's not. It's not that it's okay. You can have homosexual. You can have sex with your mother. You can you have sex with your school teachers, and everything's okay. It's all nice. It may be according to the Danish concept of life, <laughs> but according to the laws of God, the laws of nature, you have to suffer for that. Our duty is to give knowledge to society. We should distribute these books like the laws of nature. In Denmark they're distributing. We should have a picture with it. Instead of it, we made it in India with a different cover. With that picture of the cow man. We changed the cover to make it more appropriate to the book. So in Denmark they have a pig man. Simply, if we're just nice, nice, nice to everyone, <coughs> we're saying the Hare Krishna people are nice but insignificant. <laughs> Better they think we're not nice but we're, we're dangerous. <laughs> we're a threat to their society. We should not be insignificant. Just as the there's Salvation Army and uh, Old Women's Baptist Club and Save the Whale and, and Hare Krishna. <laughs> Plant a Tree, Plant a Tree Society and Hare Krishna. <laughs> Feed the poor, Hare Krishna. <laughs> we shouldn't present that our, our activity. What are the activities of Hare Krishna? We are feeding the poor. We are planting trees. And this is our this is our contribution to human society. We may do such things. But our main contribution is giving knowledge to human society. What knowledge? That if you don't take to Krishna consciousness, you are doomed to rebirth again and again and again. We stand against everything. Everything. All their values you're against. You should be careful of being too much palatable. Our very, na- our very nature is that unpalatable to the materialists. What we have is very palatable. We have dancing, chanting, prasadam, very palatable. So let people take that and let them listen to their philosophy. And they may also find it palatable. Actually, our philosophy is palatable. It is palatable. And those who are demoniac, they find it unpalatable. So let us give them books, Prasadam, Hari Kirtan. Let their mentality change to more purity. But even then, we can't, we shan't say that we'll only do Hari Kirtan and then no, we'll wait until everyone's purified, then we'll speak. No, we should also speak. Preaching means fighting. We have to quote from poetry. If there's no fight, then...